Hey folks, Ash here from Amorous Custom. In today's video, I'm going to be starting a new build series onto our channel, which is going to be a CNC machine build. And this build is slightly different from other channels because we are going to build a six axis CNC machine. And currently, this is only the idea, but I think with our effort and our passion, we are able to complete this build pretty soon. If you like this video series, then make sure to hit the subscribe and like button to show your support towards the channel. Make sure to watch the other videos of our channel. I hope you guys like those videos as well. And don't forget to give your feedback towards the work we post on our channel. And uh, this kind of work took a lot of time and hard work. So make sure to give feedback so that we can improve our work for the future videos. So before jumping right to the building section, I would like to show you my previously build. So this is the machine we built in 2015. To complete this project, we took almost 6 months from start to finish. There are couple of different types of material used to build this machine. The main frame is made out of angle iron and box pipe and over the top there are pine wood slabs used to make that frame and the gantry arms are made out of plywood pieces. After building this machine in first attempt I made a couple of changes after that in their gantry design. In the previous design there is a little amount of flex in the z-axis so that's why I made this design. If you wanted to build this machine then you can visit our instructable blog post. I provide that link in the description section down below. One thing always kept in mind while building a CNC router that never use linear rails without the support. If you are using rails without the support that will provide less stability to your design and it is extremely difficult for your router to machine your workpiece precisely. Other thing I wanted to suggest you that always make sure to go with bigger size of motors while building a CNC because you can upgrade your design in nearby future but it is extremely costlier to change all of the motors to upgrade your design. So while building a CNC, bigger is always better. So these are those linear rails for which I am talking about. They are strong enough to provide plenty of rigidity to your gantry and other axis. As far as cost is concerned, there is not a big difference between both of them. But if you are going to compare the stability of both the rods, then one having a support provide much stability to your design. These parts are not going to be wasted because I am going to build my next 3D printer with this material. Once the machine has been dismantled completely, there is enough space in the room so that I can start work on to the new machine. The new machine I'm going to build have a bigger footprint. It's gonna be 10 feet by 5 feet wide. So this is the material which I'm going to use to build the main frame of my CNC. This is 4x2 which is going to be served as a gantry rail and these are 2x2 angle iron which are going to be support the main bed and also some L brackets are going to be made with this material and these are 2x2 two two square section with which I am going to build the leg and the middle braces. Also there is 2 inch by quarter inch thick mild steel bar which is going to be used for closing these open ends of the box pipe and also I am going to make some flanges for the fastening purpose which you are going to be seen in the next phase. The overall length of this material is around 6 meters. So this is the design which I am going to be construct and you can see in the design how I am going to join those middle braces. The only change I made in my design is that instead of using these L brackets I made a flange with 2 by quarter inch thick mild steel bar and then weld it with that shorter brace and attach to the main member. I also used 2 by 2 angle iron as a support 
here you can see how i attach the gantry rail to the legs with the help of the l brackets if you have larger work surface to work on then you might definitely use that stop block while cutting down these pieces in that case you will able to get a precise length of pieces as compared to this method since these legs having a height adjustment feature so there should be no need to worry about that much if you have right workplace then definitely prefer that So now I have to cut down the shorter brace and for that I made this top block. I already cut down the pieces to the manageable size so that they can fit it onto my workbench and then I start cutting down the pieces. The advantage of this method is that you are able to get very precise cuts every time and always make sure while cutting with the with the cut off wheel that do not apply too much pressure onto your workpiece because that may deflect the wheel to the outward direction and those cuts are also not in square as well i repeat the same process with the rest of the smaller pieces which are going to be used at different places pieces are going to be used as L brackets the smaller squares are going to be well on the open ends which you are going to see and this is all of the material cut down which is used for building the CNC base To drill the holes repeatedly at same location, I set up this jig so that it would be easy to drill holes. The diameter of these holes are around 12 millimeters, and these are going to be served as a height adjuster for the leg assembly. Then I insert this piece into the thread rod assembly underneath that there is a nut and after inserting that piece I tighten it with another piece of a nut then I'm going to weld around that nut so that it gonna weld it with that square section I welded this nut only at one side but if you wanted to do it on both side then you can do that as well that would provide enough path for the thread rod to move up and down Once this work has been finished, I start the work for closing the all open ends of the leg and brace assembly.
so these are the flange pieces which are going to be welded with a shorter brace but before welding them onto that i need to mark the hole location so that i am able to drill the holes before the welding process and with the help of this jig i am able to mark the hole location at exact position every time Once I get the whole location with the help of another punch I enlarge that point so that it would be easy for drill to take a guide I drill the hole slightly larger so that there would be a space for fine tuning Then I made this jig so that it would be easy to weld those flange pieces with the shorter brace and I made this jig in such a way that both the holes are equidistant from both side of the shorter brace. Once I made the tack weld I flip over the piece and made a complete weld from all the remaining sides. After that I made another jig and with the help of that jig I am able to transfer the flange holes onto the bigger brace. Before proceeding to the main brace I made a test fit onto a scrap piece and they are connected together without any resistance and also flush from one side as well. Then I proceed the marking process onto the middle braces. Then I start doing the layout onto the middle brace and for that I measure from one side and made two mark which are equally divided the brace into three equal parts and then I'm going to insert my jig so that I am able to get the whole location. There are a total of six middle braces and four of them have holes drilled out on both sides. If there is slight amount of variation in the length of the middle braces and you are going to measure from different sides then the chances of error increase and your holes are not going to be aligned properly. So it is better to approach from only one side to get a precision fit. Once the hole has been drilled out, I tap all of the holes of the middle braces with the M8 tap. And 
here you can see how these frame are going to be joined together if you are making jigs and start your work then you are ended up with a precision fit and that would help you a lot in building these kinds of machines after doing this i am very much pleased to see how they came together the rest of the framework is going to be finished in next video so if you like this video then make sure to hit the subscribe and like button and also don't forget to watch my other videos as well